Well, I think Brexit is um, having an impact on all Britons. And I think the incidence of racism and racist attacks have increased substantially since Brexit, particularly for people who are of black or Asian background and who are British. Um, according to surveys carried out after the referendum in June last year in the UK show that majority of people who identify as black or African or Caribbean origin or Asian origin who are British um, voted to remain in the EU. And I think that's a story that's not really been told in the press. Um, so I think people are very anxious and worried. I wrote a piece earlier this year for NPR uh, exploring this um, issue, talking to a lot of black folk in Britain, in London particularly, who are very concerned, who said since the Brexit referendum and since all that's happened uh, in the last year, they have never questioned their place as in British society as much as they have done in the last year. People have, some people I interviewed had experienced open racism and we see that in the evidence um, collected by the British government um, and we see that in surveys um, and also more profoundly I think what they are sort of telling me or were telling me when I interviewed them back in April, uh, May this year um, is that they are really thinking very deeply about um, the future of Britain um, and they're very concerned about the direction that the country might take once we exit the European Union in 2019 and more profoundly they're very concerned about the kind of rise in anti-migrant sentiment, the kind of populist nationalistic undertone in our press in the UK which also exists in other parts of Europe and also finally they're very concerned about their sense of belonging and citizenship in this kind of society which some feel very strongly that no longer represent the plural, open, diverse, multicultural Britain that you know, I think we are very proud of and should be, but it felt like in the last year at least that kind of Britain was in threat and in retreat. Well, um, I wrote a Guardian long read um, which was published in the New Humans magazine before it was republished in the Guardian later. Uh, and that piece explored um, notions of Britishness um, and how that has shifted since particularly 9-11 um, and the question of citizenship. Um, which is in the UK, um, is a law that the government um, has had for a pretty long time. Um, the right to revoke someone's citizenship if they are a British citizen because they have naturalised. Now, this law, which the Home Secretary or Interior Minister um, exercises, has been used substantially since 9-11 and since the rise in the threat of terrorism, uh, and fears surrounding that and particularly suspicion around people of Muslim background and it's a tool that's used in small number of cases but the piece that I wrote was really trying to say is that the initial policy that was pursued in the UK after 9-11 uh, was designed to look at some individuals who are a threat or might be perceived to be a threat but the consequence of that law has been that it's in fact resulted in many people who are uh, naturalised British citizens or dual nationality uh, holders um, whose citizenship is now effectively, you know, uh, up for review per on a permanent basis and it's reduced a lot of people to second class status and I think that's a story that most people aren't aware of and I was really struck when I wrote that piece that a lot of people came in, you know, sort of in, got in touch with me and sort of said, I was shocked, I didn't realise the UK government could do that. And maybe finally, the, the bigger, broader point, and it's not just in the British context, um, it's really how do we uh, manage um, a society when we're multi-ethnic and when we're multicultural? How do we create common bonds of experience and solidarity? And of course, citizenship and people's legal rights in that space is really significant. And unfortunately, in the UK context at least, that legal basis on which people determine their lives has been challenged and subverted uh, in quite dangerous ways. I think so, absolutely. Even though the United Kingdom is leaving the European Union, it's a kind of retreat, a big retreat, one which I regret, um, you know, 48% of the British population did not vote um, for Brexit and many of those who did support uh, Brexit, unfortunately, I feel, were told lies 
uh, like the 350 million pounds that was going to come back to our NHS after we left the European Union, which now is total, you know, fictitious kind of figure, which is not going to happen. Um, but I think going back to your point, um, you know, about sort of pan-European issues, um, pan-European challenges, I think, you know, these challenges can only be really uh, dealt with at the you know, European and international level. And I think that's why transnational media becomes really significant. And yesterday we were in a discussion with colleagues from all across Europe, you know, from Poland, from Spain, Germany, the Netherlands to Greece and the UK. And we were all very concerned about these issues such as migration, uh, such as terrorism, such as housing, welfare, capitalism, everything really, um, which, you know, all have a transnational dimension. And that's why particularly the voice of media um, in terms of publication, in terms of media owners, but also in terms of journalists like myself who are working on the ground in many places in Europe, is really significant for us to come together and see that there are these, you know, um, challenges, but also there are these solutions and that we can learn from each other because, you know, the threats and the challenges and opportunities that we face, we face together in the future. And I really firmly believe in that. And for me, it's really important to be in these Euro European spaces because it's important to continue those conversations, even as we in the UK leave the European Union, we have to respect the result. It was a democratic decision. I did not like it. I continue to not like it. And I continue to be very worried about what's going to happen to my country. But I still believe that Britain has a European future. So for me, these opportunities are really important to keep, you know, from our perspective in the UK, in those conversations, in those spaces, in those networks.